Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History, the Constitution for Dummies series. Article 5, we're there, we're almost to the end. So let's check out the amendment procedure to the Constitution and see if we can't give it a little definition. Uh, there you go guys, giddy up for learning, we go. Alright, so it is the amendment procedure, what else can I say? It's a little bit wordy, so we're not going to actually read the text. Um, if you go down the description below, you can get to the text. But basically, there is a proposal um, piece, and then there's a ratification piece. How do amendments to the Constitution get proposed, and once proposed, how do they get ratified? So basically, in class, I teach this with a little bit of a beat. We go ba bump 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 to thirds of both houses, three-fourths of all states. And it's most basic form, that's really how it's done. When two-thirds of both houses of Congress call for an amendment that gets kind of thrown to the states for ratification. This is a really great example of federalism, right guys? Federalism is the division of power between the federal government and the state governments. Therefore, the proposal mechanism is basically given to the federal government with both houses of Congress and that two-thirds supermajority needed. But then the states really have the ability to ratify or not ratify that amendment. So that's really important to understand. There's also a mechanism where if Congress Congress won't budge, you can get two-thirds of the states to call for a constitutional convention to add a new amendment. This has been used to push Congress if the states really want an amendment and they're not moving fast enough. Now, um, one thing that's kind of unclear, and the Supreme Court has kind of thrown this to Congress, is what happens in terms of length. If you have a Congress propose an amendment, is there a clock, is there a ticking clock that occurs? And early on, the amendment process really didn't have a clock. So if we look at something like the 27th Amendment to the Constitution, which is really the pay raise amendment, if you give yourself a pay raise in Congress, you're not going to get that money until you face the electorate. This is kind of directly tying, you know, your action to your job. But that was proposed, drum roll, 1789, and then it was ratified by the states, right, in 1992, that was the last amendment we got. So we're talking about, I can't even do the math in my head, somebody just put the comment below, 1789 to 1992 was a very, very long time. Um, since then, most amendments have kind of come with like a six or seven year window. The ERA, um, th that happened, two thirds of Congress passed the ERA, I want to say 1972, and then it was thrown to the states where it kind of lingered and it fell a couple states short. They extended it to 1982, I believe, but nevertheless, it ended up failing. We have right now four amendments that were kind of already proposed by Congress and were kind of left out there for the states to ratify and they've never been ratified and they don't have a time limit. So if you're interested in any of these amendments, they're already waiting for the states to ratify them. One of them would be the Congressional appro uh, Apportionment um, Amendment, which deals with how many reps you get per citizens. We also have titles of nobility. So if an American citizen accepts a title of nobility, that they're stripped of their American citizenship. That's a hot one. I'd get on top of that one. We have the Corwin Amendment, uh, which basically says that the uh, federal government has uh, no ability to deal with domestic issues in the states. This was specifically brought up to keep the federal government away from slavery. I don't think I'd go to that one. That's not going to probably work out. And there's actually a child labor amendment that would give Congress the ability to regulate um, child labor that would trump what the states were doing, and that was never passed. So those are four good ones right there. I also would like to propose an amendment, so if we're listening out there, especially congressmen and congresswomen and senators, I know you watch my videos all the time, but I really like the idea of a 28th amendment to deal with gerrymandering. Right now, gerrymandering is really the ability of a state legislature, which is either controlled by the Republicans or the Democrats, um, using census data to draw the congressional lines in a way that's going to benefit their party. So they have partisans, they have political party appointments 
appointees that are drawing those lines in such a way to really guarantee them success in the upcoming elections in the House of Representation. So what I think should be done is that should be taken out of the political arm of the state and be given to a nonpartisan, neutral, independent, maybe get some math heads in there or data freaks to draw those lines in a nonpartisan way. And I think that if our lines were drawn like that, we'd probably have more districts that were swing districts. And I think that's really good for our republic. When you're in a swing district, you have to listen to both the left and the right when you're making a decision. You're much more likely to compromise. Where if you're in a very partisan ideological district, and um, you're not going to be really willing to compromise too much because you'd end up getting primaried in your own political party. Where did I go with that? Oh my God! Bum 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 bum. Two thirds of both houses, three fourths of all states. That's the process for proposing and the process for ratifying. Remember, we've had 17 amendments in the, since the Bill of Rights, so it's really hard to change the Constitution, and uh, I'm sure you know why. So tell me what you think down below. What about that 28th Amendment idea? Or maybe you have your own kind of proposal for an amendment. Put it down below. Let the, let the comment crossfire begin, and make sure that you uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, you can click right here. I got something for you to click. Click, click Noam Chomsky. Who doesn't want to click Noam Chomsky? Of course you do. And you can subscribe. And if you haven't checked the description below, I have tons of other channels that I think that you would be uh, benefited if you click their buttons for your brain. There you go, guys. Where attention goes, energy flows. I'm Mr. Hughes. And if I was a car, I'd be an Audi 5000 because I'm out of here. It's the worst joke ever.